Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Well, it's good evening, I should say. It's been a busy day for me. Thursday night, March 23rd, 2023. It's about 9, 10 p.m. along the West Coast here in California. And the latest activity uh, looks like a 2.4, uh, 1.2, 1.3, and a 2.4 on the Earthquake 3D Globe. 2.4 over in Turkey. Notice we have an earthquake swarm going on at Mauna Loa. Uh, before we jump into that, let's go ahead and check out space weather activity here real quick as we're looking at a significant solar storm tonight. Aurora is being seen down into the northern tier states as well as down into Wyoming, uh, portions of Montana, Iowa. A lot of folks being able to see that uh, aurora on the horizon and that's pretty cool i think anyway I, I really like that looking at the current conditions of geomagnetic activity shows the sub auroral line now it's possible with these elevated conditions to see auroras way out on the horizon if you look to the north up to this line and that includes portions of oregon washington uh, and as you can see down here certain other states maybe colorado as well so get outside if you can and you have clear skies here is the current aurora forecast. We're still elevated. Notice up into Canada, Alaska, goodness, getting in on some spectacular photogenic auroras tonight. Uh, I'm a little bit jealous. One of these days we're going to see it. Uh, if I have to wait for uh, a California storm or if I venture up north to see it myself, it's going to happen. Uh, but either way, significant auroras taking place right now all due to a uh, well, a combination of things here. We are looking at uh, that solar wind stream that was flowing from that coronal hole right here. Uh, it was facing Earth here uh, over the past couple days. It has arrived and uh, sparked up some KP index conditions above 7. The G3 class storming uh, level is right around KP index of 7. And uh, we peaked out above it. Coming back down a little bit right now, still into the G2 uh, G2 storm category. Uh, so this could persist throughout the night. Uh, also in due part because of the, uh, well, the uh, BZBT component. It's the interplanetary magnetic field tip south. Let me show you guys the live uh, space weather data. I don't know why Solar Ham doesn't have that on the site anymore, but notice this huge gap here indicating uh, a opening in the magnetic field uh, with this BZ component, BT, BZ component here tilting south. That's allowing a lot of the charged particles from that coronal hole that we witnessed um, flowing right into uh, the magnetic, uh, the uh, upper levels of the atmosphere. See if I can spit this out. <laughs> so yeah, goodness. And that's... Uh, it's hard to say how long it's going to go throughout the evening, uh, but looking at the current conditions here, uh, I wouldn't doubt it if it goes throughout the good portion of the night. Uh, speed is not way up there as uh, far as the uh, intensity. It's kind of a little bit lower. Uh, I can only help, I can only wonder uh, if this had been a much more uh, powerful event, what, what it would have looked like. But uh, for, for now... Definitely got that uh, potential. I've seen some good auroras, again, up at the uh, higher latitudes and the mid latitudes. So get outside, all right? Okay, um, going on to earthquake activity. Goodness, what do we got going on here at Mauna Loa? An earthquake swarm kicking up out of the blue around the northeastern flank of Mauna Loa. Of course, Mauna Loa is currently sitting at green meaning that it is not uh, showing any signs of eruptive activity or any interest. But I guarantee you, uh, if it keeps this up, it's going to change. Uh, probably, possibly, before the night ends. As far as the, uh, the level goes. See right now, normal. They have not put out uh, any notification here in regards to any activity. That is the HVO. Uh, their last update was put out here at Kilauea Volcano. Uh, earlier this afternoon. So let's go ahead and look at the earthquake activity popping up here. Uh, we did have a 3.9 come in that kind of kicked it all off today. This was uh, just earlier, about 8 o'clock my time here, 3.9, originally coming in as a 4.1. Uh, 
Uh, and since then, we've been having a pretty good earthquake uh, moment here. It looks like some twos and threes and uh, some ones in there as well. Now, the interesting part of this uh, earthquake activity is the, well, the depth of these earthquakes indicated there um, on the right side, 3.9, about 3.7 kilometers deep. Some other earthquake, acti uh, er other earthquake activity depth there, about four to five, six kilometers or so. That would be very consistent with magma on the move and possibly rapidly. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this and see what develops. I did pull up the uh, the area here and uh, quite a few of these seismograph stations are unfortunately offline. I, I don't understand why, um, but what good are they if they're just sitting there offline? So I had to um, see which one was that. Uh, I believe it was one of these down here. I don't think this one's up and running. Nope. So many of them offline. So got to be a little sneaky and See if we can't zoom in to this seismograph station right here. That one works. Uh, this one sits on the uh, eastern flank there at Mauna Loa. There is the 3.9, originally a 4.1 coming in a couple hours ago. As you can see on the 12-hour chart, things are ramping up here, folks. Definitely uh, kicking up pretty nicely. We did have some earthquake activity uh, earlier in the afternoon as well. It doesn't look like they're reporting all the earthquake activity yet. Um, and I say that because, goodness, there's uh, a lot more than what the USGS is showing here at Mauna Loa. They're reporting 12 earthquakes, but as you can see there on the seismograph, there's many, many more following that 3.9 and also prior as well. So uh, we'll wait and see what the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reports on. Um, again, I think this will change um, possibly overnight as far as the... Uh, the alert level because uh, it is kind of a um, an intense swarm and it just came up out of the blue uh tilt meters out here not working um gps stations not really working out here either i i don't know i mean i don't know who to complain to about this but you know you think you would think that uh these tilt meters would be up and running so we can keep an eye on what's going on here but it does absolutely no good to even check any of these. I, like I said, I can only get one seismograph station working there. There's another one further south, but around Mauna Loa, the top of it, maybe, it, I don't know, do they still have snow out there? Uh, they did earlier, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll come back and check on that. Uh, let me bring up the GPS with these guys. I don't know if these guys are uh, have any active um, measurements out here or not, but we'll double check here around the eastern flank of Mauna Loa, right about here. Um, and this goes to about, it doesn't really cover 2023, so that's that's what I'm looking for, and it's not there. So we can obviously see the decline there when Mauna Loa was erupting. Ah, oh, goodness. Let me check way over here. This one doesn't really have it either. So it's hard to say. I'm looking for the uh, uh, vertical displacement on some of these uh, seismograph stations there that can kind of give us an indicator of what's going on there underneath the ground, if they're swelling, you name it, stuff like that. But some of these go back 2004. Come on. Goodness. All right. So again, earthquakes warm around Mauna Loa. And with these depths here, that's uh, definitely... It, Firmly believe there's some magma on the move. Keep that in mind there. Uh, down here in the southeastern flank here of the Pahala area, very typical movement, very typical depths there, uh, between 30 and 35 kilometers deep. So nothing abnormal uh, down there, but uh, up here, definitely. All right, let's see what else we got here for earthquake activity. Well, it looks fairly quiet in terms of anything above 4.0. For the um, the Western Pacific out here, let's see. Whoa, goodness! Look at that deep 4.8, 510 kilometers deep. Not showing up here yet, or is this it? Maybe this is it. Yeah, that is. You USGS actually kind of quick on that. Uh, that one coming in about 7:30 or so my time. 500 500 kilometers deep for 4.8, Banda Sea region. 
Goodness. Uh, so that means that something's brewing down here, folks, with that type of, uh, of level of earthquake down there. Uh, some other smaller quake activity across the region as well. We are noticing a little bit of push here across the area of the northern end of the Java Trench northward uh, into northern India and the Myanmar region. 3.9 coming in here. Looks like around the Himalayas right now. Uh, so we will watch this. I think things have been uh, definitely brewing up here, been building for quite a while. It's been awfully quiet in terms of large-scale movement in this specific area. Of course, we've had massive amounts of movement here across the Philippine Plate and the, uh, about the southern end of the Java Trench, but not a whole lot of forward uh, migration there. Uh, further activity across the Turkey region and the Middle e uh, the Mediterranean. Looks like they did have some earthquake activity in Iran. Let me see where that's at here. Back out of here. Um, yeah, here's that one. 5.6 coming in this evening in Iran. Iran, 17 kilometers deep. Still fairly active in this area. Uh, considering all the aftershock movement. The Atlantic Ocean looks calm and clear. Uh, I don't know about the waves, but as far as earthquake activity for now, it does look pretty quiet. South America, only a handful of quakes. Not a whole lot happening out here along the eastern Pacific or adjacent plates. Notice that? Look at that. Things are very quiet out here. Hawaii popping, though. Um, so I don't know what's going on. Squeezing in the middle, so to speak. Might be getting... Uh, a little bit active there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean here soon. Uh, also got an earthquake coming in here to the um, New Zealand area right now as we speak. 3.3, 200 kilometers deep. Goodness. Let's see what's going on there across the GeoNet servers. And... <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Three points. Well, that's from yesterday. Eight minutes ago, 3.3, 200 kilometers deep here. It looks like uh, underneath the Bay of Pliny. Um, just south of there is where we've been having that pretty good earthquake swarm. But that depth there tells me that it uh, looks like it could potentially be at the northern end of the Hikarangi subduction zone, which, sit, which sits uh, just off the east coast here of North Island. Uh, 2.9 down here off the Alpine Fault, it looks like, around South Island. Uh, no major quake activity, but uh, these deep quakes, got to watch out for them. Could, be, uh, could definitely be spelling some trouble out there. Not really seeing anything major popping off right now as far as the uh, earthquake drums, the volcanic drums here. Uh Fairly quiet around the Mount Tarawera area. This is just south of the Bay of Plenty, North Island. This is where, kind of where we've been seeing that earthquake swarm pop off there over the last couple of weeks in that region. Although things look a little bit less active here over the past couple of days, but we'll continue to keep an eye uh, on the New Zealand area. All right, West Coast. Um, let's double check that real quick, see if we got anything noteworthy to chat about. A little bit of movement here on the Garlock Fault, just off of it to the north, 3.1, and um, a couple other smaller quakes, literally within minutes of each other. Uh, let's see what we got. San Andreas Fault, quiet for now. That's over here. A little bit of spotty activity across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. One earthquake off the coast of Baja, 3.9 coming in way early this morning. Um, but overall, doesn't look like there's too much activity um, to chat about there. Let me see what we got for 2.5. Was that one up in Wyoming near the Bighorn Mountains? Uh, let's check out the trimmer tonight. Kind of curious to see what's going on with the trimmer. Cascadia trimmer, that is. Zip zero. That would kind of make sense, though, uh, with the... Uh, lack of activity out here. You can kind of see it here on the Earthquake 3D globe as well. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on across the eastern Pacific or the adjacent plates for now. This is very minimal activity across the region. Uh, and this is the last 24 hours. So uh, less pressure out here along the Cascadia subduction zone uh, indicated there by the lack of trimmer being reported today. 
All right, uh, let's see here. Double check this. Yeah, these things are just popping off like crazy. Again, the HVO will probably update this once they get around to it. But nothing yet. Uh, not a zip zero as far as any updates on the hazard notification system. We'll check back on that uh, tomorrow morning, unless something changes overnight, of course. Um, who knows? Earthquake swarms like that, just out of the blue, not necessarily a good sign. All right, uh, let's see here. Space weather check again. Looks like I say, um, get out there if you can into the northern tier states. The current conditions here along the sub auroral ring is indicative here of a major storm. Um, so get out there. Maybe possibly northern Oregon, it looks like, but kind of have to follow that line. Uh, either way, it's worth it. If I lived up there somewhere within this. Uh, orange circle i would definitely be out there of course canada getting in on the brunt of the action as you can see here some beautiful shots that i seen on uh, social media uh, about an hour or so ago up there and also into uh like illinois and somebody even reported it there into eastern wyoming um you know colorado can get some so just get out there and see if you can see those beautiful sight indeed uh, quick glance at the weather forecast here. We had some pretty awesome thunderstorms roll through here. Uh, I was on one earlier and dropped uh, some nickel-sized hail on me. I uh, reported that to the National Weather Service um, due to the uh, uh, the size of the hail. And radar uh, indication, indication was uh, saying it was going to be one-inch hail. So they made that thunderstorm a severe, uh, severe warning on it. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. We do have another big storm coming up here into Monday and Tuesday. This this one here is going to hit Northern California head on with that low pressure system parked off the Northern California coast. Southern California going to get some rain as well, but the brunt of it looks like going to be a fairly cold system here with a lot of heavy duty snow once again and some uh, good rain for the valley. After that, the weather models kind of pause here halfway through they're updating so not going to wait around for that but we'll definitely check that in the uh future updates here Alrighty, take care folks stay safe and uh big island be on guard out there in hawaii we'll catch you guys a little bit later on have a good one everyone